Welcome to Hong Kong, Asia's financial hub and the gateway to China. I'm Tim Harcourt, the airport economist, and I'm going to show you how to do business in this part of the world, whether you're here to do a deal, set up shop or enter the Chinese market. Operating overseas can be scary, but don't worry, we'll guide you through it. We're going to quiz Hong Kong's top business gurus, learn about the local culture and hear from companies cashing in on strong demand, quality overseas products. But first, let's learn about this fascinating city, a global metropolis where East truly meets West. Hong Kong sits right in the middle of Asia, on the southeastern coast of China. And as an airport economist would know, half of the world's population could be reached in a five-hour flight from Hong Kong Airport. Hong Kong has a population of just over 7 million people, of which 94% are ethnic Chinese. It's a truly bilingual city, with both Cantonese and English as the official languages. The economy is growing at around 2% a year. It's the world's 34th biggest economy and has the 18th highest GDP per capita. Unemployment is running at just over 3% and the major industries are financial services and shipping. 70 of the world's largest 100 banks have offices here and it's home to the world's sixth biggest stock market. Hong Kong's strategic location and deep natural harbour make it an ideal global trading hub. Here you'll find the world's busiest air cargo centre and third busiest container port. A Hong Kong base allows companies to operate in an established business framework while gaining access to the world's second biggest economy. The manufacturing regions of southern China are within easy reach and exporters can directly target the 1.3 billion Chinese customers across the border. Charles Ng is Associate Director General of Invest Hong Kong. He says Hong Kong gives you the best of both worlds. We're the business capital of Asia and also uh, China's global financial centre where really the, all, all the opportunities that the second largest economy in the world is happening and we are really right in the middle of it. And is it easy for foreigners to do business in Hong Kong? Absolutely. The free flow of information, free flow of capital, free flow of uh, movement of people and goods make it really an ideal place for businesses from all over the world to, to come here and, and use their, their uh, Hong Kong as a platform for their regional headquarters or even for some, for some of the global functions in Hong Kong. Hong Kong is rated the world's most open economy. Freedom of trade, investment and fund flows consistently give it the number one ranking on the Index of Economic Freedom. Unlike many other Asian economies, corruption is very low and the government enforces intellectual property laws. Hong Kong's low tax rate also makes it a very attractive place to do business. Salaries tax is a maximum 15% and the top business tax rate is just 16.5%. There's no sales tax or capital gains tax and there are virtually no tariffs or barriers to foreign investment. Do you see Hong Kong as an entry point to China or a significant economy in its own right? I think the answer is both because you know it depends on what you're looking for. Uh, Hong Kong's uh, our economy is a really small economy, but we are quite a significant economy in a sense. As companies use Hong Kong to bring in the investment to grow in China and in Asia, we are also a springboard for mainland Chinese companies wanting to go global. Hong Kong neighbours China's Pearl River Delta, the mainland's biggest manufacturing region. It's home to 120 million people in cities like Guangzhou and Shenzhen. This is the cradle of Deng Xiaoping's modern economic revolution and the pin-up for China's success. It's only getting easier to access this area from Hong Kong as transport links improve. Soon you'll be able to do the 142 kilometres to Guangzhou in just 48 minutes on the train. Telstra is one of the biggest telecommunications companies in Asia. Hong Kong has been its regional headquarters for decades. I spoke to Cynthia Whelan, the company's head of international business, to find out why. There's a couple of reasons why Hong Kong is a great market for us to have our headquarters. Firstly, of course, is its geographic proximity, not only to China, but to many of the important markets for us in Asia Pacific. But also Hong Kong in and of itself is a great market. But importantly, as a telecommunications company for ourselves and for many of our uh, global peers, there's a large amount of infrastructure that runs through Hong Kong. So it makes a lot of sense for us to have our headquarters based in such an important market. And when choosing Hong Kong as an Asian headquarters, was tax and a skilled workforce important in choosing Hong Kong? Well, certainly Hong Kong is an easy place to do business. And so there are certain conditions in the Hong Kong market that make it a very logical place to set up a headquarters. Tax, of course, is one of them. Uh, English is well spoken in Hong Kong. Uh, the legal system in Hong Kong is also um, makes a lot of sense and it's quite easy to understand. Um, but, but for us, the main, the main reason was um, just its proximity, its, its location. 
And, and Hong Kong is an easy place to get in and out of. You know, there's a lot of multinationals. There's about 4,000 multinationals and large companies that have got their headquarters in Hong Kong. And the reason that a lot of companies do that is because it is not only just physically located very close to China, but the Hong Kong airport is phenomenal. It's incredibly efficient. And so it's an easy place to get in and out of and to use as a hub for the Asia Pacific region. Now, Hong Kong's a very competitive place. What do you practically need to do to set up a business? Well, the first thing is you need to decide whether or not you want to take office space. And office space, like all rental in Hong Kong, is really expensive. And so probably the best thing to do is decide which part of Hong Kong you actually want to be based. Do you actually need to be in the CBD or can you be a bit further out? Because the further away from the main business district you are, the less expensive the rent is. Um, secondly, look at local talent. Make sure that you're hiring local staff as well as bringing in capabilities perhaps from outside. Hong Kong has got a fantastically well-educated and well-trained workforce, so you will be able to find good resources and good talent in Hong Kong. And so make sure you balance bringing in expats with also uh, bringing in the local talent. Um, and then the final thing I'd say about setting up a business in Hong Kong is understand the local nuances and the local culture. There's a few things in Hong Kong you may have heard about, a couple of um, aspects, particularly I'm thinking about things like um, around Chinese New Year, giving out red packets. Mm. This is all not familiar to us in Australia, but it is critically important. It's not a huge financial outlay, but it's a, it's a critically important symbol to make sure that your the team that you employ in Hong Kong and the business that you have in Hong Kong is seen as respectful and seen as part of the community. So make sure you, you understand uh, the culture and the nuances in Hong Kong, and, and that, that will then lead you to have a much, much happier and more engaged workforce. Hong Kong is a place with a fascinating history. In the space of 100 years, it grew from a small Chinese fishing village to a global financial centre. 5% of world trade comes through the port behind me. This unique city welcomes foreign business, operates in English, and is an easy place to launch if you want to get into the Chinese market. Hong Kong is a special administrative region of China and operates under the one country, two systems principle. It will continue to do so until at least 2047. The city has its own basic law and a high degree of autonomy. In true business style, the head of government is known as the chief executive of Hong Kong. Both Chinese and British influence has shaped Hong Kong. The local economy prospered under capitalist colonial rule and became a busy trading port. Embargoes placed on China in the 50s and 60s meant all business to and from the mainland had to go through Hong Kong. Chinese refugees flooded in as they fled civil war on the mainland and foreign businesses moved offices down from Shanghai. China's loss was Hong Kong's gain. Immigrants brought expertise and funding for manufacturing and textile industries, which propelled the economy. Over the decades, living conditions improved as public housing, free education and labour reforms were rolled out. Hong Kong developed world-class infrastructure and by the 1990s was regarded as one of the world's three global financial centres, along with London and New York. British rule ceased when Hong Kong was handed back to China on the 1st of July, 1997. Hong Kong's strategic position and unique relationship with China make it an attractive place to do business. You'll have the ease of running a business in Hong Kong, but the opportunity to sell to the massive mainland market. Blackmores is an Australian health supplements company that's gone global. It has a major presence in Hong Kong, including three flagship stores. It's not only targeting the ageing, affluent Hong Kong market, it's also selling to health-conscious visitors from mainland China. I caught up with marketing manager Moon Chow to find out why the company has set up shop in Hong Kong. Hong Kong is a free port and there is no any consumption tax on most consumer goods. So um, many of the Chinese tourists, they will buy our product in Hong Kong, especially the high quality healthcare supplements because they trust Hong Kong product and because uh, they believe that the, um, this 100% from Australia. So why are Western healthcare products very popular in Hong Kong? as opposed to local products? I think the reason is the quality. Uh, the Hong Kong people, they will buy the health supplement product, uh, they will concern on the quality. And Blackmores has very high quality product, especially our fish oil. Blackmores isn't the only company benefiting from strong local appetite for high quality overseas products. Foreign agricultural exporters are cashing in on Asian demand for clean and green produce. Here at Ocean Park, Hong Kong, Premium South Australian food and wine is on the menu. It shows that countries like Australia can move from the mining boom to the dining boom. Ferguson Australia exports live lobster and other seafood products from South Australia 
to Asia's boutique supermarkets and high-end restaurants. It started out in Hong Kong supplying Michelin-star restaurants. It's now expanding into the retail market and online. I visited founder Andrew Ferguson to find out more. How is Australian seafood regarded overseas, particularly in Asia? It is very highly regarded with, with the, the cleanliness of the, the, of the, the seas and, and the, our, our factories and whatnot, so yeah, very highly regarded. And is the clean, green, safe image of Australian seafood more important than price in, in Asian markets? If you really seek out the right niches in the market, yes, and that's what we, we endeavour to do when we're marketing. It is a challenge to start off with to try and find those right markets, particularly for a high value product, but if you stick at it long enough, you eventually find the right, right places. As the market changes, we're sort of switching from a, 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 a food service side still in that food service through the distribution network, but switching more in the retail and e-commerce as the market changes, trying to find the right products for those, those markets. If you were giving advice to a business out there looking at Hong Kong, what would be your, your three tips? Um, look, I'd, I'd, I'd say for a start, be prepared to put some hard yards in and, and travel a bit and, and meet the people and get to know your, your, your potential customers, your potential supply chain participants or, or your partners in the supply chain, but be prepared to stick at it for a while. Don't expect to, to kick goals straight off the bat because it is built on relationships and that trust needs to be fully understood from both sides. And once you start to build, uh, build that trust, uh, you can expect to see the fruits be rewarded and, and be rewarded for it. Well, what great insight into doing business in Hong Kong and China. Next up, we'll find out how you can start selling into this market or even start your own business here. Low tax, few barriers to entry and a billion people on your doorstep. Sounds like the ideal place to start a new business or expand an existing one. But how do you actually do it? There are a number of organisations that can give you information and help you get going. Government groups like Invest Hong Kong offer free advice and services to help you set up in Hong Kong. Local and foreign chambers of commerce are also extremely helpful. They can connect you with potential partners or clients and provide information on local business issues and opportunities. Actually, establishing a business in Hong Kong is quite easy. The first thing to do is decide on a name and a company structure. Limited liability companies are a popular choice. You only need one director who can live outside Hong Kong and also be the sole shareholder and a company secretary which can be a body corporate or registered office. Advisory firm Grant Thornton can guide you through the process. I sat down with Chief Executive Greg Keith. And what's it about Hong Kong that makes it attractive for multinationals? Is it the, the low tax environment? Is it the skilled labour force? Is it the location? Uh, look, the location is, is the obvious uh, from uh, those that are not actually involved in Hong Kong because it is on the doorstep to China. But I believe the strength in Hong Kong is the people in Hong Kong. It has a wealth of knowledge. It has people that have huge amount of uh, regional expertise. They have a lot of cultural understanding. It's the head office for a lot of Asian uh, businesses and as a consequence, you're dealing with decision makers. So you can go to one location and meet people who really understand the issues and they can assist you in doing business in Asia through Hong Kong, particularly for China. And if you're a foreign business looking to do business actually in mainland China, is it wise to have your tax and your accounting operations situated in Hong Kong? So there's a couple of different issues there. They are different businesses. One, one business would be in Hong Kong, which would ordinarily be the holding company. There are distinct advantages in setting up a holding company in Hong Kong, because if you want to sell the business in China at a later date, it is much easier to sell the uh, shares of the holding company and repatriate the cash out of Hong Kong, given the uh, ability to move funds. However, if you're um, selling the business in mainland China, you need a lot more government support and approval. So I would ordinarily recommend that you have a business set up in Hong Kong, that uh, the accounting and the financial records are set up with an advisor there, but you need a local advisor for your business that's in China. So is operating in Hong Kong fundamentally different than operating in any Chinese city? Absolutely. Uh, Hong Kong is based on English common law and as a consequence of that you're working under the same sort of contracts, you're working on a similar uh, legal system, a similar culture as what you would be working on in America or in England or Canada, Australia, etc. 
When you're working in mainland China, it is a different legal system that is influenced by the government. You need to rely on your relationships and you need to be present. You need to ensure that you're continuing to uh, build guanxi with the parties that you're engaging with. And it is a completely different culture that you need to understand. So, so the, um, the differences are quite stark. So in starting out, how do you gain and access local knowledge? There's probably three or four key areas you'd need to uh, have assistance. The first would be from an accounting side to assist you in structuring. Grant Thornton would love to help everybody in that space. Uh, you also need to have a, a, a legal practice and a, that's able to assist you with your type of law. And there are a number of fantastic uh, leading firms that can do that. You need to have a financier that's able to transact on the mainland. And you also need to have uh, someone who has industry knowledge. The China-Hong Kong Free Trade Agreement gives local companies special access to China, with all goods exported to the mainland tariff-free. In fact, almost a third of Chinese trade goes through Hong Kong ports. Hong Kong is a free port and doesn't charge duties on imports and exports, except tobacco and alcohol. Hong Kong is known as one of the world's shopping hotspots. According to Australia Post, it's not just in malls. A whopping 70% of the population shop online. Hong Kong consumers spend about two and a half billion online each year. It is a small territory, only about 7 million people, but they have a real passion for shopping and conversely, a real passion for shopping online. So what's unique about the Hong Kong online shopper? So the Hong Kong online shopper tends to spend more per transaction. They have a higher basket size, how much they spend online when they actually go and do a transaction, because they do desire prestige goods. So how can foreign businesses access the Hong Kong market to sell online? So marketplaces are a great strategy to access the Hong Kong consumer. They like to shop on Alibaba, um, especially Tmall, which is a Chinese marketplace. But they also use English-speaking marketplaces like Amazon and eBay too. So you can actually launch your product into Hong Kong on an English-speaking website without some of the barriers around language. You can find out more tips from Australia Post on our website. It's hard to succeed in business if you don't understand the local culture. You need to learn how partners, competitors and customers think and operate. It's so important to try and understand cultural issues instead of seeing them as a barrier. You don't have to be an expert or linguist to succeed, but a bit of effort goes a long way. IVL Yong is Chief Executive of ANZ Hong Kong. She explains how Hong Kong is truly unique. If you look at Hong Kong, it's a very unique uh, place. So it had both the Western uh, benefit of the Western world and, and also the Eastern culture. Being, you know, a, a British colony, it has the uh, legal infrastructure and the way of doing things that the Western company will understand. It had a very simple tax regime. It has absolutely no uh, ethics control or sort of thing. So, so it's very easy to understand and it's easy to build trust. Here are Ivy's top tips for your first dealings with Hong Kong Chinese partners or customers. I would say, you know, establish relationship and trust first is important. Get to know the person, understand, you know, the background and where they're coming from before talking about business will make things more easy. And uh, I would say sometimes, you know, uh, especially if you do business with the SME, a lot of the situation is husband and wife, son is running the business as well. So it will be no good to know the dynamics, who is doing what, making what sort of decision will be very important. And I would tend not to uh, jump into conclusions so soon. Uh, ask a lot, lot of questions to make sure you understand uh, what they mean. Because sometimes, uh, you know, both sides may have different assumptions of what they are trying to do. The ANZ Opportunity Asia report shows that Australian businesses in Asia are far more profitable and have better growth prospects than their domestically focused peers. Can your business really afford not to consider the opportunities that Asia presents? Read the ANZ Opportunity Asia on the sbhub.com.au. In all my travels working and teaching in Hong Kong and China, I've learned a few valuable lessons. Never address people by only their first name especially when you've just met. Use their last name and title correctly. Remember, Chinese people write their surname first, so Lee Chung would be Mr. Lee. Always present your business card with two hands and take the time to read the business card you've just received to show respect. 
China is a conservative place compared to many American and European countries. So make sure you always dress smartly, especially when you first meet a business associate. I visited the Grand Hyatt Hong Kong to find out how to build good business relationships in the city. What's the key to building good relationships in Hong Kong? Well, I would say um, trust. Trust um, means a lot, you know, in Hong Kong, um, business like world and uh, you have to build this trust and this will become a relationship for years and years and years. Respect the culture, but also enjoy the diversity of, of, of Hong Kong. Um, Hong Kong still very much Chinese influence, right, in, in a way because the majority of the population is still Chinese. How important is the greeting and the, the presentation of business cards, for mm -hmm. example? Mm -hmm. Very important because um, a lot of people, I think, they, they sometimes they, they joke also, they said that, you know, in Hong Kong, you will, you will need to have a stack of name cards, you know, all the time. Yeah. That's very true because I think in, in, in Hong Kong, is, it means like um, you are leaving a connection yes. and which is for you to, to connect, you know, for future. Are there any major guidelines to follow when you're entertaining clients or partners in, in Hong Kong? I think most important is just just be discreet with all these changes. Um, you know, in the past like five to ten years, that I I don't think that now um, put up a lavish dinner or go to the karaoke is still is still the trend. Mm -hmm. But I think to pick a restaurant which is um, according to the to the favor or the preference of your guests um, that will be important. Great advice there. I checked in with the hotel's concierge to find out how to get around town. If you're arriving into Hong Kong as a business traveller, uh, efficiency is, is most likely key on your agenda. You need you have a place to be at a certain time. Uh, generally, we recommend taking the Airport Express. It's only 100 Hong Kong dollars from the airport downtown, 23 minutes, and uh, you know exactly how long it's going to take. And if I'm uh, taking a client or business partner out to eat, where are the best places, areas in Hong Kong to, to dine? For dining, Soho over in Central is, is definitely one of the hot areas right now. You can get quite literally any cuisine you wish from Argentinian steakhouses, Japanese ramen, uh, Neapolitan pizzas, even local cuisine as well. A lot of travellers may have a weekend or a day away from the office here. What are the sort of hidden gems that you can go to uh, in, in the Hong Kong area? I personally find that um, one of the most underappreciated aspects of Hong Kong is nature, that we do have nature here. So. 20 minute taxi ride from where we are right now, you could be by the beach over in Shek O or Big Wave Bay. My personal favorite is over at, on Kowloon side at, at the New Territories. And I, and I promise you once you, when you're there, it's as if you're by the, by the beaches in Thailand. It's, it's really beautiful. It's definitely worth considering Hong Kong if you've got a good business idea or looking to expand into Asia. What did we learn on our journey around Hong Kong? Be culturally respectful, but be yourself know how to present business cards and learn about local customs. You don't have to learn Chinese to succeed in business here. Get help from Invest Hong Kong, government bodies and chambers of commerce to get started. Mix East and West, get to know locals as well as expats. Treat Hong Kong as a significant economy in its own right, as well as a gateway to China. Head over to our website, theairporteconomist.com, where you can watch extended guest interviews discover exclusive offers from our partners and find out where we're flying to next. Well, that's it for this episode. Thanks for joining me on this journey around Hong Kong. I look forward to seeing you again for our next business adventure. I'm Tim Harcourt and I'm the Airport Economist.